And joining me now in studio is Dr. Haye Tankon Yanorocek, a Turkey expert at the Jerusalem Institute for Strat Strategy and Security. Great to have you back, Hi. So a 40-minute phone discussion yes. between Presidents Erdogan and Herzog. So there must have been more than just pleasantries involved. Uh, but how much, we have a new government. It's trying to reset relations with countries that it's had a lot of difficulties with, with certainly Jordan, to take an example. But Turkey, that's a different sort of challenge. Indeed. Uh, first of all, uh, let us put this in another way. This is 40 minutes, but since Erdogan does not speak in English and he needs translation, so from my perspective, it was only 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> That's still but tough. still, it's uh, it's very Fair good. Enough. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is a this is a good positive step uh, from my perspective uh, because unfortunately uh, during the uh, last years we only witnessed to the demonization of Israel in Turkey. And uh, since the Turkish president is doing such an act, uh, it is, of course, give encouraging uh, those people who are trying to mend the fences between the two countries, meaning academics and uh, journalists, etc. So, uh, but still, I don't think that we should expect something more because the Israeli decision makers are making it very clear that unless Turkey will put an end to its uh, support to Hamas terrorist organization, Israel will not going to launch a genuine normalization with Turkey. And when we are speaking about genuine normalization, of course, uh, this also requires uh, not demonizing Israel on daily basis and, of course, sending an ambassador here and, of course, uh, not supporting Hamas. And uh, But still, uh, we do not see that uh, on the Turkey side that uh, they are uh, eager to do such a thing. They are only saying that uh, they would like to normalize their relations. In other ways, uh, in other words, uh, they would like to enjoy the fruits of normalization without uh, paying a price uh, for a real normalization. And I also would like to emphasize here another thing. Uh, Mr. Erdogan did not uh, congratulate our Prime Minister, uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, and he chose uh, to communicate with his counterpart. And uh, from my perspective, the core reason for that uh, is the uh, demonization that Naftali Bennett uh, was uh, already, uh, I mean, he was demonized in the Turkish uh, press for having a military past. Uh, however, uh, we cannot say the same uh, story for uh, our president, uh, Yitzhak Herzog. Who has a military past yes. as, as well. Yeah, but uh, not as uh, not Promise. as much, yes. Uh, so uh, it is a lot easier for Mr. Erdogan uh, to come and to explain to his people that uh, since Herzog is a president and he himself is a president, so it's uh, easier to justify this uh, new step. And uh, I also think that this step uh, is not designed uh, in order to acquire some uh, political pluses uh, in the domestic politics, but rather uh, it is uh, designed for the Turkish foreign policy. You already showed our audience that uh, Israel and Jordan and also uh, the Egyptians are engaging uh, in multilateral uh, and, uh, like uh, summits. Also the United States is very much active in this uh, whole picture. So Turkey, which was uh, considered as an ally of the United States, uh, historically speaking, uh, now finding itself excluded from all of this uh, strategic picture. And uh, that's why the, it's conflicts, we should say, with the U.S. over such issues as the uh, yes. uh, as purchase of Russian anti-missile yes. uh, defense the, the systems. Ka the Kaatsa uh, sanctions, uh, this right. is for the first time a NATO member uh, was sanctioned uh, with, such a, with such a sanction system, which is tagging it as an adversary. This is uh, something unbelievable, uh, right? right. Uh, the, the Turks are... A country that is still a member, an active yes. member of NATO. Uh, yes, and uh, they are tagged as an adversary. So uh, Turkey, uh, I mean, uh, is trying to mend her fences with the United States. And from their perspective, the way to Washington passes from Jerusalem. Right. Uh, but uh, as you said before, they're trying to do it. Well, just explain very briefly, if you could, uh, I mean, 
the the relationship with Hamas antagonizes Israel. Yes. It antagonizes Egypt. It antagonizes, uh, for example, some of the Gulf states, certainly yes. the UAE you know, yeah. countries that could be of great benefit for Turkey. Of course. Uh, I mean, uh, what is the core reason uh, of this whole Abraham Accords to contain Iran? Uh, today, Turkey is very much challenged, especially in Iraq, by the uh, Iranian Shiite militias, Hashti Shaabi. So uh, if Turkey would uh, leave its uh, ideological-based foreign policy in favor of real politic, which is based only solely on interests, so I see no problem to have also Turkey on board uh, on this uh, Abraham Accords, and it will also facilitate for Turkey to find uh, a solution also in the Eastern Mediterranean, because at the end, when Turkey is uh, deteriorating its relationship with the State of Israel, it is pushing Israel into the arms of Greece and Cyprus, and then Turks are complaining. Right. So, so, so the benefits are there. The question is always whether President Erdogan can move away, can make that transition. Yes. So and far, we haven't really seen any. <laughs> yes, but he's capable of doing it. He's capable of it. Yes. Let's see if he can actually carry it out. Indeed. Uh, uh, Professor Hayat and uh, Yanarochak, thank, thank you. Thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Rundown.